always thought that about Broken Records. You guys have had a kind of a focus and a, and a purpose about you right from the very yeah. start, really. I remember. Does I that remember. come from you? Does that come from everybody else, or is that no, what I, happened? Was the band came together? The band, you, you the had band the bands was, before that. Yeah, you? I mean, I, I, I've, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and you know, I, I sort of have certain ambitions of what, or at least ambitions of what I want to try to do with the band. Um, I think when we got together, it was a, there was a lot of. Mourinho, Mourinho ing going on. It's just like <laughs> you're Jose fucking Mourinho. amazing. You know, you're brilliant. You're better than that. So is this you? Are you the Jose Mourinho of no, the Edinburgh music scene? I like to think I am, but <laughs> but the other guys will just tell you I'm a dick. So it's uh, you. You have to push yourself. You have to want to be as good as you possibly can be, or otherwise, what's the point? What are you offering? I mean, it's just like you can write the best songs in the world, and nobody will hear them. Well, what's the point of writing them? I just I never understood the whole artistic thing of if, if as soon as as soon as you write it down as soon as you sing it so it's in the public domain and and the whole you know as soon as you even you know perform it once you you want people to hear it because what's I mean I just don't understand the point of doing it if you're but so what for, happy with what, what are you getting off of people hearing it then is it is it the is it the approval is it the is it the feeling that what you were trying to express you finally expressed properly because there've been enough. I don't know. I just, I just find, I, I, from a personal point of view, I just find the whole thing quite cathartic. You know, I just, you know, I. But what's the difference between, say, playing that to a small devoted fan base, and never really pushing it that far, and and playing it to, you know, in, increasingly large I'd, audiences? Well, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, I think I'd love to be able to tell you that. You know. I'd... <laughs> the deal and you suddenly realise you just you know owe a company some money for the recordings you've made so um, you know it, it felt absolutely brilliant and you know to have, to see the record and all the stuff uh, you know in it's it's all very exciting and to see the 4AD label behind it is just like yeah it gives you butterflies and stuff but at the same time you do just kind of realise that the job is starting now you know it's, <laughs> and and you know you'll you know, you you kind of live or die with a sword now. If you don't sell enough, then you know it's not in their interest to keep you on. And they've got so so you're just very aware of the fact that now your dream is kind of not come true. But you know now, now it's, it's taking a step towards. It's almost closer to crashing and burning as well. So you kind of it's like you've got something. You know, it's a little flame that's flickering so in, in terms of what you hope you will happen. And you've got to got to guard it because so otherwise you'll you just you go swap downhill. One horribly. set of anxieties for a whole different yeah, set exactly. of, of I mean, manic anxieties. Nobody wants to be fucking shed seven, you know. And that, you know, and the one thing you always think in your back of your mind is, in ten years' time, are people going to look at the wreckage you brought and go, "That's horrible," you know? And that's that's the one thing that you, yeah, you, you just try and do the best you can. But you, you know, you have the worries: are you just a fad thing? Is this that the other? Are people going to be interested when you bring it out? As I, I you think too much, mate. to play the open mic nights and you know just when you 
if you manage to get a genuine sort of, I don't know, kind of connection with someone or you know, nothing as wanky or fucking happy as that or anything, but you know, you just, you, you're able to look someone in the eye and you just see them actually enjoying it, you know, and it's just like, and then they're enjoying something that you've written and whether or not, you know, they're, I don't even know whether people even listen to the lyrics and just, if they just like the tune and they enjoy it, that's great. They listen to the lyrics and enjoy it, maybe they, um, I don't know, I, I don't write too much from the lyric wise from the absolute you know, personal point of view because I kind of gave up doing that I got bored of it um, so you just I don't know you got like, bored of what writing really yeah, involved lyrics yeah or? Oh, I don't know I'm just sick of hearing sad bastard songs about girls it drives me crazy now it's just <laughs> yeah but that's not involved lyrics that's typical lyrics that's typical of, well that's just boring you know it's just like but yeah, writing well, about Hedda Gabler is not necessarily typical lyrics so you don't want to be no, art that, wank that's, but that's you, smug <laughs> that's, <laughs> no, in, no, that's intellectual no no no, no, it's, no no but you know you hear you heard the, for some reason that, I mean that lyric you, you hear the, the chord and you hear the cello mm. go and then all of a sudden that line the first line of it came to my head like straight away and mm. the lyric was the easiest thing in the world to write you know and so it was um, so you know that, that that's just how that comes sometimes songs are as easy as that and you just do it good it's it's us it's well recorded i mean i'm obviously i'm i, I, can't, I can't be objective about it anymore like you've said many times it's just, it's yours and you know you think it's great um i worry about the fact that you know i mean that's it's big songs and you know they're, they're not sort of it's not given the embrace treatment or anything but you know they're recorded well yeah and, i you suppose know, you, you've been embraced by the indie crowd and if you yeah. if you move away from that scratchy recorded in a microphone in the sock drawer in the next room aesthetic you, yeah, people might I'm, get I'm funny I'm not sure we ever really we ever really had that crowd I'm sure that they kind of I don't know I'm sure they turn their noses up at us for you know I, for, for whatever reason I, I don't know I kind of get a big chip on my shoulder about everything pretty much you know I don't know where we stand <laughs> I really don't know where we stand with anybody so but, but you know I, I just we, we've written a, a bunch of well, I think good songs, catchy songs, yeah. and uh, you know we've recorded them well, and we just hope people like them. Well, I, mean, I don't care who likes them. I just from my point of view, like though, um, I mean the, the the readers on Song by Toad in particular, a lot of them who are personal friends of yours and mine. So, but we've been waiting for this album for a very long time, yeah. and it's weird. You get really paternal about a band, even though in many ways it's actually not anything to do with you. But I think there's a lot of people, certainly who I know, uh, certainly on the Edinburgh music scene, who are just fucking excited as hell yeah. really that it's coming out and really really looking forward to it oh, so I hope it really I hope it goes well for you mate it's been yeah, fucking brilliant and yeah. you deserve every Thank success you, man. I'm fucking pleased to sponge for all of you guys <laughs>